right, so I am here with Vasily, who is an Instagram guru. So he's one of the people that I depend on to teach me uh, how to use Instagram for my photography business. So I thought this would be really cool instead of interviewing photographers for the people that are struggling to get going on Instagram. I thought this would be a, a very interesting conversation. So I'm going to start off with Vasily and, and explain who you are because nobody in my group knows who you are. And there's a reason <laughs> for that because I don't want to give out my secrets. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks so much, Bob. Uh, it's a pleasure to be uh, to be on your show. You know, to have a conversation. We talked a lot in the last uh, few months, and uh, obviously, it's been a very nice to you know help you and uh, educate you as well with the platform. So yeah, my story with Instagram it started a few years back. I was actually just you know trying to find what I can be kind of good at or what I can help other people because you know I was studying. I wanted to make some you know extra income as well uh, and eventually it happened to be instagram and uh, you know there is no really uh, i was not really trying other platforms i just kind of uh, hop on instagram and uh, my coach was actually asked me to help him with his instagram so i started to you know investigate what the platform is it i like and especially five years ago it was uh, much different than right now so we, we didn't have live uh, there uh, we didn't have uh, you know many features to be honest. So the only way was to actually post something that people gonna share, uh, not actually share, but mention in the comments. So if you remember before, people used to right now you can actually reshare your posts right to others, save them, reshare them. Uh, but before, if people liked something from uh, some brand or some uh, person, they would mention their friends in the comments. So their friends will also see that. So that was quite interesting. And uh, I actually started to, uh, my coach was doing uh, fitness, uh, you know, physical activities. And um, his business was basically all about uh, fitness equipment. So I started to create like a workouts, um, you know, like content workouts basically for people where they can either, you know, mention their friends uh, or they can just some of them were just taking screenshots and just saving they, saving them to their phone and eventually that what will make made account grow and we reached like over 10,000 followers i think it was just a little over than one month which is pretty insane <laughs> and it's very hard to do this uh at the moment because the growth is very slow compared to was a few years back so yeah that's was my first case and then i started to help others and eventually i helped over uh in amount of five years i helped over eleven thousand people so that's actually uh over tw twenty thousand orders uh, which i completed and my services uh, mainly were on the fiverr platform so that's a freelancing platform uh, and yeah and then i started to switch my focus a little bit because there is more things that I wanted to be involved in Instagram, you know, working with different kind of people, uh, also organize this kind of membership, which we're having. Uh, so, so yeah, there is a lot of things with Instagram, but I'm very, I'm very passionate about the platform because obviously there's new rules, restrictions, especially this year, but I still believe there's a huge opportunity for a lot of businesses uh, and a lot of personal brands to get their name out there. Cool. Cool. That's quite interesting. You mentioned coach, which I thought was interesting. So you are a, I'm going to call a semi-professional tennis player, were you not? Well, actually, I mean, I would say professional because I was actually playing uh, tournaments, uh, like a lot of tournaments. And uh, my goal was to become like a, a top 10 a professional tennis player. But then, of course, you know, things have changed uh, because of like education. My parents wanted me to get a good education as well. Uh, and I'm originally from Russia too, so when I was, you know, here, it's really hard to uh, do both. You know, we don't have a system like, for example, in U.S., where you can go to college, but you're still, you can still pursue your sporting career. Uh, in Russia and in Europe, actually, it's a little bit different. You either go to you like a physical uh, exercise university, where basically, you know, there's all Olympians, uh, athletes, you know, for going there, and they just going to have uh, a coach degree. Uh, and if you want to be professional, you just had to go to the university like that, because that university allows you to not go like to school every day, but be more free and focus on your career. And if you make it, you make it. Uh, if you're not, you're going to have, you're going to become like a coach. So I didn't really like that idea because obviously I see myself, it was kind of, you know, tennis is very like, even if you do well in juniors, 
uh, there is a very small percentage that you're gonna go you're gonna do really well when you're a pro at the professional level right so you know i didn't really want to be just uh, kind of surviving on the tour uh, basically because a lot of my friends you know you have to make uh, at least you know top 80 in the world to be like actually making some money if you're not making that level you're just surviving on the tour and it's also very stressful because you know i wanted to as well build something my own so that's why i started to be involved with instagram and eventually my focus kind of switched so you know i still was playing at the good level i was able to get a, a very good scholarship i was able to go to us play division one uh, tennis uh compete you know a really high competition there but then you know i just wanted to continue with my own things which i was doing with instagram so that's how it kind of turned out to be it's kind of interesting because you have a tennis court sitting behind you so i thought that was a good <laughs> yeah actually back there i was training a lot when i was younger this is right now i'm actually uh at like our uh how you call it, like a house outside of the uh, outside of the city uh, in russia they call it uh dacha so like uh, basically most of the people live in the city and then when you have like a country uh, you know side house uh, they people usually come on the weekends you know on holidays just to relax you know usually like grandparents live outside uh, and yeah so i'm kind of lucky you know to have this court we built it very very long time ago so it looks a little bit different now actually now it's still it's still quite cold i would i mean to play outside it's still kind of cold so but yeah this is the court i was training a lot i was practicing practicing serves uh, and also on like on the other side i have like a, a wall where i was just practicing my shots wallace so yeah it's a really good memories you know i'm still training now because we're in quarantine so uh, i'm trying to my goal is to continue playing at least some tournaments i'm not aiming to become like a pro uh, you know again but i want to you know give myself a chance to compete with good players and then who knows you know eventually if it's gonna be good yes but you know i'm not putting a lot of uh, weight on on tennis so <laughs> well that means you still have drive so my question is going to be that you still have a lot of drive so that case what are your top five tips for making it in, on instagram so if you had had to give somebody five tips for instagram what would they be and, and just give me your five tips and then we'll break them down and talk about them yeah so i think um you know top five tips with instagram obviously you know first thing i would say what is the most important is of course focusing on your content you know you have to be sharing uh, valuable content because eventually content will make when people see your audience see your content they will make uh, they will share it with others if it's useful you know eventually it's going to be pushed in the algorithm with the hashtags you know so like a content should be you should have a, at least know what you're posting so you know you should not post just the random stuff you should have a strategy so let's say in your case you know you're a photographer uh, outdoor photography so you know what you should be posting outdoor photography show your work show your uh, exceptional work because that's gonna drive the type of audience you want to attract right so this is the first thing because if you'll be posting random just like let's say uh, everything you know like your house uh photography uh then the car you turning as a blogger you know like as like a lifestyle so some people might not just understand exactly what you're doing who you are and i you know i highly suggest to uh you know when you're pushing your instagram to figure out what your niche is you know uh, and if you don't know at the beginning that's fine you can experiment but you have to know uh you know who you're basically trying to speak to what kind of audience if it's a photography, if it's a fitness, if it's a fashion, maybe it's a lifestyle, maybe it's, a, I don't know, maybe it's a real estate, for example, and you're connecting this to your work. So this is the first thing, content. Um, another thing is, of course, social media means that we need to interact with people, right? So obviously, you need to spend some time, you know, maybe a few hours a day. It depends how your schedule look like, but you should try to interact with other people on social media. What I mean by interacting, you know, it could be simply as when you post something on Instagram and you get some replies, let's say in the comments, you know, people comment a few stuff to you. You should definitely reply to them. You should definitely maybe ask a question, counter question. Uh, if, you know, someone says like, oh, you know, for example, great, um, you know, great trip or great work you had, you know, you did or whatever. And you should maybe ask, you know, something just to keep that conversation started that conversation going and see where it could bring you because your goal besides 
who you want to appeal to the audience your goal should be attract you know loyal people like loyal fans and build the loyal audience on your instagram so as soon as you're going to make these conversations with people uh you know they're going to see that because as you know on social media instagram there's a lot of spam on social media there's a lot of spam it's going to be very hard to get rid of it completely so many people are kind of like oh they left me a comment maybe it's uh, like some sort of a program you know like it, it's very important to really engage in these conversations. That's where, for example, uh, you can use on Instagram DMs, direct messages, and you can really, you know, connect with people. And that's amazing because you can actually message anyone on Instagram. You know, if you think, uh, especially, you know, uh, I'm sure back when this email marketing, you know, emails just started to happen, you know, it's it was very hard to now it's impossible to speak to like a bigger you know bigger guys in the business because they won't reply to your email because they're getting a bunch of emails every day but on instagram you have this opportunity where you can just send a <clears throat> direct message to a person and then the person could reply to you you know you never know so it's very important to create this conversation engage with people <laughs> so i know we talked about two but you know it's kind of and sorry for a background, I have a train is passing by, so it's kind of sometimes every other than yeah, comes, I, but yeah. I, I don't uh, hear. Number three, I would say number three could be your, you know, again, that's, you know, attracting your loyal audience. But for example, going live is probably the best strategies all time. Because first of all, not many people are going live. So, you know, it's not easy. Like we're doing this, for example, I'm speaking just to you, you know, maybe it's it's kind of good, but when you're speaking to kind of potentially everyone and everyone can join, uh, or maybe you have few people and you're worried uh, that you're not gonna have a lot of people. So it's important to, you know, really try to uh, create this strategy of going live. Try to go live because if you create like a pattern of going live, more people are going to be, you know, treating you as like a kind of like a show and they just will be excited to like, you know, like a TV, for example, when you're watching TV, you have those different shows. So I encourage everyone to start to think about maybe your own show and create this through live and through Instagram, for example, right? So live is very important because you're instantly building loyal fans. Whoever's going to wait, as whoever's going to basically watch you for maybe 10, 20 minutes, that person is going to remember you, is going to remember what you're saying, and then is going to turn out to be a loyal uh, loyal follower, loyal person, right? So that's kind of three strategies. Uh, you know, another strategy is like if we go a little bit uh, shorter, like for example, using hashtags, right? This is a good strategy. It's very it's kind of simple. A lot of people not really understanding well this strategy. So I want to make it clear that hashtags, they do work. They're going to work for... Uh, I don't know, maybe not forever, but they're going to definitely work for a long time. So if you are, you know, thinking, oh, like someone told me don't use hashtags or they're not working. No, they are working. You know, that's another thing. Every marketer has, you know, every perspective. But if you look at the top marketers, if you look at the stats, if you even use the hashtags and just look at your stats, you will see that you might have extra few people watch your post. And if your post get pushed in Instagram, because this is the most important thing, if you're posting something, Within 30 minutes, Instagram is gonna determine if the post is good or not. What I mean by good is that if you're gonna have more activity than usually whenever you post something on Instagram, and then Instagram is gonna keep pushing to the rest of your audience, not everyone, but to the big percentage. And that's also helps with the hashtags, right? So hashtags, I suggest to use uh, up to 30 hashtags every time right and you can always alternate because your hashtag should not be for example let's say if you're in fitness uh, niche in the sports niche you should not use hashtags like fitness sport motivation because the problem is that they're super popular uh, if you you'll probably you have like one percent chance of making in that hashtag right so especially if you're just starting out start with the smaller ones so smaller ones i mean hashtags with let's say five thousand posts uh maybe ten thousand posts maybe three thousand posts so like start with specific you know and then you slowly uh, you slowly change the change the percentage you know the more you grow you can start using bigger so let's say you can start using hashtags with hundred thousand posts right up to three three hundred thousand posts and then when you grow even bigger you can use try to use sometimes um, a big ones just to see in case you might make it or not because if you're gonna it's like a lottery if you're gonna make it to the big hashtag like let's say fitness 
that's probably going to be your big win day because you're going to get a lot of people, you're going to get a lot of eyes, right? So that's why it's very important to to really stay consistent. So another tip I want to give is, and that's actually I should I should have told this the first. <laughs> the, that should be the first thing. The first thing is uh, is to optimize your account, your Instagram account, because. Uh, before you start pushing it to other people, you need to optimize it yourself first. What what I mean by optimizing is actually making looking like professional. So you you should have first for your profile picture clear. You know, basically shows who you are because a lot of people when you watch someone's story when you appear somewhere they're gonna see your profile picture pretty much the f the first thing right so if you have some like a white background or bright background or maybe you're you're making like a funny face or maybe you're just serious right or maybe you have uh, instead of your real picture you have like a uh, you know someone draw it for example that will attract people they'll be like oh that's cool let's check Let's check uh, this person out. And then when they go to your Instagram, you need to structure your bio. Bio is the first thing. So what I mean by structuring, first of all, you have your name, right? Which is a bold, in bold. So you should put your first name, last name, right? If it's a business, you should put your business. And then you can also add additional your, maybe your niche. Let's say your DJ. You can maybe put like a DJ or photographer or artist, you know, something like this. Because this line, the first line, uh, the name line is seo friendly so people can just type something on instagram and then they will they might find your profile so maybe you can put if you're a business in business business coach right you can put business coach there so when people type business coach they will they might find you right so then when they go, when we go down uh, on instagram you can basically include more information but stick to what is very important very important is to have your credibility so let's say you have feature in um, I don't know, in some sort of a magazine, maybe your work has been featured somewhere, right? This is important because people will be like, wow, he's actually been featured here and I'm actually reading this book or I'm actually reading this uh, magazines, right? So they're going to treat you differently uh, straight away, right? If you have some sort of achievement, you know, maybe you have a award, you won the award or something, you should definitely include it there because that's going to, you know, that's the thing. Because if you're not going to include that, people are going to spend three seconds on your Instagram. They're not going to understand who you are. They're going to leave. If you put some sort of a data, you should not lie. So you should not say you're like being featured as number one phot photographer in the world <laughs> and then put that. So you should obviously tell the truth. But if you have some good credibility, that's you should definitely put. And then, you know, when we go down, let's say we have our link on Instagram, which is the only one link. You should try to put a call to action uh, towards your website, right? Because if you're just going to leave your link without any pointing down, people just not gonna you're gonna miss some clicks so maybe for example learn more and then they have website link right so this is just kind of some tips for getting started could be for anyone right if you're already existing there's always good to to work on these things because you can work on them every time so yeah i don't know if it was five but i think that's, <laughs> that's a good amount to start well that's a good amount to start with so one of the things that i've been Todd, I guess from you, and, and it's interesting, when you start your Instagram account, know what you're looking for, but make sure that it's all coordinated together. So your profile and your hashtags and your picture and what you're trying to produce should all match. So if yeah. I use outdoor photography, for example, then my profile should be outdoor photography, my hashtag should be outdoor photography, and my images should all be outdoor photography. So to me, that's one of the first things um, you have to do is make sure that you're staying within whatever your niche is. So that's a good yeah. thing. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, and a lot of people don't know, is hashtags. So where do you put your hashtags yeah so you know there is uh, basically you have two ways you can put them in the caption or you can put them as a first comment there is no difference in terms of the results the results will always because sometimes people say like oh i got better reach better impressions when i put uh, in the caption rather than the comment but this is actually might be because your content content is different might be because you post at the peak time you know there's just different factors that will matter that uh you have two ways i encourage everyone to put as a first comment because 
there is a few reasons. First of all, you can use up to 30 hashtags. So you know, if you use, let's say, five instead of 30, you can have only five chances to be featured on these five like you know hashtags. If you use 30, you have more. So it's like you know uh, you're buying one t lottery ticket or you're buying uh, you know 30. You have obviously more chances. So it's kind of this you know similar thing. So you can use 30, and I encourage. But then if you put them in the caption with your text. That's gonna look kind of you know spammy because people are gonna see these hashtags, right? So I encourage and just you know suggest to put them as a first comment. So whenever you make a post on a, on Instagram, just go in the comments. Just you made a post in a few seconds. Go in the comment section and put all of your hashtags there and post it as a first comment. All right. So here's now. Here's, now you hear the, the train go. The, I hear the horn. The plane. <laughs> the military. What is it? The helicopter, I think. <laughs> well, it's actually pretty, pretty low, but yeah. Well, I hear it now. Well, it's actually very. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm sitting this location because it's the best connection possible. Because it was very hard. I'm like the house is kind of in the like it's not in the hall, but it's kind of in the low position so it's hard to get a signal and uh, uh yeah this is the best so and now it's the train the planes usually it's quiet especially at this time but we appreciate that's... your time and effort yeah okay here's here we're not done with hashtags yet because although you put them in the first comment there's a kind of a different way of getting hashtags now are you using a a program like flak tech or anything like that to, to get hashtags well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of uh, like manual research, obviously it takes time, but it's probably one of the best things because first of like, if you're just, you know, getting, um, if you're just getting started with Instagram or you have not used maybe hashtags, the best thing is just to understand to who you want to, you know, your post, you want to appear your post to, right? So let's say if it's outdoor photography, so you should, uh, you know, start typing outdoor uh, photography. Uh, put outdoor you know you see how many options you have there you can maybe put outdoor photography and you can see how many options you're gonna get there right so just the first thing is to understand your hashtags and kind of like that will match your uh, your niche and your you know the audience as well and then when you find this first list of 30 hashtags yourself and start using it you can obviously you know see how they you know how good they are right then I encourage to uh, research another list of hashtags another 30 hashtags yourself and then you have two lists of uh, you know 30 and 30 see so you have 60 hashtags so you can alternate them but then when you start using them consistently there is certain apps um, and, and tools which you can use to kind of like see the analytics you know see the how your post is doing like which hashtag work better than the other one right and then based so i always encourage to do it manually but then going forward you can use uh, different tools so uh, one of the good tools like for analytics it's called hyper uh ed i think how hyper editor something like this and you can basically you know analyze your account you can see you know the hashtags and it, this is a great tool tool there is another one called uh, flick i believe so if you type in google flick you're gonna see uh well hash so there's a lot of different tools they're always changing i'm not you know those tools today we have these kind of tools then the next day we'll have another so the best way i'm big a fan of manual because you can still see how your hashtags perform so start with manual but then if you just even type best hashtags uh tools for instagram let's say you're gonna find a good list and you can just try to use them so yeah, no. one of the things I also noticed with you, especially uh, in, in some of the courses that you've taught, is the fact that you say that you should use a ratio of hashtags to locality. So if I'm doing a fitness, I'm going to do so many hashtags on fitness, but I'm going to do so many hashtags on where I'm located in San Francisco yeah. or wherever I am. What's your ratio? Yeah. Which is which is kind of interesting. I I've started started to do that. So I've looked. I'm on Vancouver Island. So I looked up 15, 10 or fifteen hashtags on my locale. But I'm also doing outdoor photography or nature photography. So what is the ratio when you put a hash set of three hashtag up yeah. that you should be using for locale to what you're trying to push? 
Yeah, location hashtags are actually very, uh, very good because they're going to bring you local uh, people which you want to target. And especially for you. So like if you want to target people, you know, in Vancouver Island, you should always use these kind of hashtags, Vancouver Island uh, and just everything related with that. And the ratio I would say is, you know, let's say we have 30 hashtags. So I would say at least maybe 10, you know, start with 10, 10 hashtags should be your location hashtags, which you want to target. And it's fine to target different, you know, uh, let's say you want to target different cities. So you can use, you know, uh, let's say New York, you want to target, you want to target Toronto. So it's fine. The most important thing is don't use like, let's say you want to target Toronto. So don't use Toronto hashtag because it's very popular. It's basically falls in the category where it's just too, too popular. So go a little bit deeper. So maybe Toronto 2020, uh, you know, Toronto, Canada. So you see the numbers are not in the millions of posts, but maybe in a, a tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands posts when you look at the hashtag. These ones are, are good. So yeah, but if you feel like location is more important for you because, you know, you want to track these kind of people, then you can start using maybe uh, 20 of um, the hashtags just with location, maybe all of them 30, right? So it just depends how important is uh, to have a niche versus the location. So this is, I would say. All right. See, I, I had never thought of that. I, you know, I put up nature pictures. I go after everything nature. And then it dawned on me, hey, maybe I should putting in location for those people that I'm trying to hit to build my audience that are in that area. I think, and also I think anybody that's running a business like a fitness or an auto shop or anything that's a local business, using hashtags that are local would probably be very beneficial to them. Yeah, and then another great thing, let's say, for example, uh, if you're going to use location hashtag and maybe you, let's say Vancouver Island, maybe it's not extremely popular, right? But if you, you know, if you start using it consistently, uh, you know, you're eventually going to be your post might be let's say six months old but you'll be still at the top section there so whenever someone searches maybe like in two months three months whatever uh and that person probably is is a good lead for you potentially right so he's going to see your post at the top right so it's kind of it's good to uh, let's say dominate certain hashtags if, even if they're small because they're eventually going to get bigger and bigger and whoever searches for them these people are kind of like high leads because if you use like nature photography you know, it could be anyone, people, let's say like in Russia, US, Canada, India, Australia, like it could be anyone, right? So it's kind of, you you can attract more people maybe, but the quality is, you know, maybe it's irrelevant for you. So that's why it's good to use a small ones. And if you even, you know, don't see a huge traction at the moment, it's kind of like a long-term game, you know? It's like with the YouTube, you post a YouTube video, uh, you know, People can search it forever, your topic, and they're gonna see it uh, after one, two, three, five years, right? So with Instagram is the same. Whenever you use a hashtag and you post uh, indexed with that hashtag, it could stay at the top for even like a year, you know? So this is the important thing for sure. Well, you mentioned staying at the top, which is quite interesting, but it's not just hashtags that push you to the top of that tag or that category. It's also the amount of shares uh, that that image or that post would get. So it's not just, you know, that's one of the things I've started to notice that I may get more people that like my image, but I'm not at the top of the post because I'm not getting the interaction and the shares uh, with it. I'm sure Instagram has some sort of algorithm to get those people in the top, I think 12 or, or photos. So that's a, that's something people may not realize may maybe the fact that uh, people may not you know they may have more share or more likes so they're wondering why they're not at the top so so the thing the the factors which matter to be at the top or not is first of all if you're making a post like you know this 30 minutes kind of like uh, determines if it's gonna go to more people or not so this is important right so whenever uh, instagram sees let's say in the there's 30 minutes or an hour, the activity, which is kind of uh, more active than usual, they're going to also push this in your hashtags. So this is important. You have to, you know, um, you know, you have to keep in mind about these factors. And also when you're posting, you have to be posting at the peak time. So when you go to your uh, Instagram insights, uh, I believe you go to audience 
scroll down and you can see your schedule right so you have to post at the peak time and basically whatever time you see is your current um, time of your uh, of your time zone right so peak time uh, also the, the what kind of post let's say for example i can tell you from my example so my instagram people used to see pictures of me when i'm posting and when i'm I know going somewhere they prefer, they used to see my face they used to see me so whenever i make a different post which is like like a carousel post which is another kind of trend we can talk a little bit about it too uh, when i post this like a gallery with a text and some valuable uh, it's kind of a different post so my audience they're kind of uh, not used to this post so they're reacting slowly they're maybe just scrolling away you know like just keep because it's also important when people scroll their feed and then when they see your post, if they stop and watch and read, that also plays an important role, right? So the longer they watch your post and read it, the kind of more it pushes in your algorithm as well. So my audience not used to see this carousel gallery post. So that's why Instagram is giving me less reach, much less than my post where I'm you know, showing myself. But I know that even though it gives less reach, it's still important to some people. And it, that ratio is going to continue to grow. So that's why if you're like starting to post something different, you know, let's say just available tips and things, and you see that they're not performing well, don't get, uh, you know, discouraged because it's just the algorithm, your audience need to get used to them, right? But then in the long term, it will it will be all good. So it's not it's not a problem. So yeah, these are just that. some factors. Never knew that one. That's actually pretty cool. And that makes sense. The longer they stay on your post, the longer they're inside Instagram. So I guess the carousel and adding a lot to your description underneath the image to keep people reading and, and involved in your post. And see, there we go. Yeah. Learn something you new have, every day. Okay. So with the longer captions, you have to also think like when you're writing long, it should obviously not be super long because some people just don't want to read it. So you have to really balance it, right? So I would say in the caption, don't put just one sentence. It used to be like, it's not it's not really gonna work that, that well, right? Try to include some maybe like a, maybe a small paragraph, maybe two to three sentences, right? Just kind of like describe a little bit. Maybe let's say if, if it's your work, describe some important aspects about it, like maybe which camera you used or which location or how, you know, or something maybe interesting fact, right? So you should always try to, because eventually you might track let's say people who likes to read they're gonna you know read your caption they're gonna like it share it other people who are just looking at the pictures rather than reading they'll be attracted as well so it's kind of like you know you can attract in one post different kind of audience and uh, eventually a longer format is very good because it makes people longer at the same time you can share more value and that's pushes in the algorithm as well Cool. Okay, so one thing we haven't talked about in this video is stories. How important are stories becoming in Instagram? Because they're they're like a one minute video. Yeah, they're 15 seconds, uh, basically clips of 15 seconds, <clears throat> and you can post unlimited of them, right? So it could be <clears throat> hundreds, uh, thousands in a day, right? I mean, not many people are doing that because like you'll just have to tap for a long time to go through them but stories is very powerful the thing is with stories i think people are still you know that that's maybe like a, a lot of people are trying to be perfectionists with their instagram and their stories but stories is should be some it's like you're behind of scenes content right because it's going to be gone for 24 hours like people are just gonna forget about it it's just lasts for 24 hours. But if it's something important, when you post in the stories, you can save it as a highlight, right? And it's gonna stay for forever, right? So I encourage everyone to, you know, post stories like on a daily basis, but you have you have to have a structure in them because you wanna make sure people come back to your stories, right? So you have to kind of like show them something, let's say in your case, you're uh, doing photography, right? So you have an amazing content on your feed, your best work, you know, your amazing spots, uh, outdoor nature, right? But in the stories is more kind of you just talk King, like hey guys i'm going to shoot uh, today we have this um you know vancouver island this location i'm going there so it's kind of like you know you're just showing behind the scenes what kind of settings maybe you have on your camera what kind of scenes what kind of 
location you used, why you have used it, right? So you create this interaction with people. So if you record stories, I encourage to record yourself, you know, get more comfortable speaking to the camera and eventually your message is going to connect and basically will make a huge change to a lot of people. So like maybe if it's 10 people watch your story, it doesn't matter. But if you say something, if you speak to your audience, uh, they're going to eventually, you know, remember it and that will turn maybe a new lead, a new customer, or just a loyal person. So yeah, stories, extremely important. The other thing with stories that there is no limit, right? So you can put as many as you want. So um, one of the things with stories I can suggest uh, when you're, let's say, recording yourself, don't forget to write some caption, right? Maybe just a topic. So it could be, let's say you're talking about, uh, you know, camera settings, right? So and you're just holding your talking about the camera settings and then showing them, right? So just write some like, this should be the camera settings in your uh, stories as a text, because many people don't hear your story. Like, you know, when they wake up in the morning or they watch it at work, they don't really hear it always, right? So if they see your text, your caption, uh, and it's something that important, they're gonna, you know, stop it, save it maybe, or listen to it. So it's important to also include some sort of a small piece of text no, no, I, I agree. And, and again, you get my brain thinking as we go over some of this stuff. It, it's kind of like stories. So why not pick one day a week where you're doing something? And then because they're 15 seconds, kicks off and people can watch them. So why not yeah. do five or six throughout the, throughout the day, which would be kind yeah. of interesting. OK, so it's six o'clock in the morning. I'm leaving for a photo shoot. And yeah, then when you get to the shoot, I'm at such and such. Here's the shoot, and here's what I'm going to hopefully catch. So that makes for an interesting thing. But again, I guess the one of the things that we didn't, I'm not sure if we talked about, was consistency. So being consistent on your posts so that your audience knows when you're going to post. For me, yeah. I go shooting once a week. I can't post photos from my last photo shoot every day. So I pick out two days a week, Saturday or Friday night and Sunday, I think. And I post at that particular time. And that's when my yeah. images go up. I should probably write that in my profile. That would probably be a smart yeah, idea. No. <laughs> it, 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 it's good because you should make those shoots to be like a pattern for many people. So they know that, okay, Tuesday is your shoot. And then they're going to go to Instagram and you on Tuesday, are, you can, even if you don't have a possibility to post straight away to your Instagram, you can just record with your, uh, you know, camera, uh, phone camera yeah. app, right? And then at the end of the day, you just post them as a sequence, right? But it's important to for people to understand that, okay, uh, Bob is going on Tuesday on new shoot, and I'm interested to see how he's going to choose location, where he's going to go, what his settings will be. And you're doing this in the stories. You're just like, hey, guys, it's Tuesday. It's our day. Uh, and we're going to this location. Uh, this is what we're gonna use. But this is what gonna, we're gonna film. And it's fine to do this not every day, of course, right? But they're gonna remember that that on Tuesday, this is what is happening, right? It's kind of you know the, the sessions we have. Like every Wednesday, uh, we have this you know like a group talk. So I don't need to kind of remind you because you already kind of like kept it in your head. So it's the same with your Instagram. If you make like a daily life, it's it's very hard to do daily life. But let's say weekly life weekly Tuesday live. People will know that, okay, on Tuesday you will be live and that's a great chance to ask questions or just to see what's up and how the week went. So yeah, creating patterns, very important. Yeah, no, I agree. Okay, but you know what? We've been on here for a long time, so I don't wanna give all our secrets away or all your secrets away. So I'm <laughs> gonna cut this, but where can people find you? That's the key question. So if somebody's looking, cause you have a couple of items on the go for people that they can do for free. So where can yeah. people find you? Yeah, the best way is, of course, Instagram. So uh, my username is Vasilis. So it's V-A-S-I-L-Y and then 17. So Vasily 17 or Vasily, doesn't really uh, matter how to pronounce. But that's where people can find me on Instagram. Uh, and uh, yeah, so when they find me on Instagram, you can just send me a direct message or just click on the link. And you're going to find a lot of free information there as well. And you can just, I have a few like challenges to help you with optimizing your Instagram. I have other ways as well. So yeah, Instagram is the best way. Uh, and you can just send me a direct message and well, I'll happy to. There's uh, Instagram. There's also freelancehustle.com. There's a four day challenge on that. Yeah. Yeah. They can also go on freelance hustle. Uh, there is like, I mean, 
by the time you're listening, you'll you'll find it out because I'm making some updates as well. But you can go to Freelance Hustle. Yeah, that's the platform I have, which I'm building as well. Uh, and uh, you can find a lot of a lot of things there as well. So yeah, either well, yeah. way, and you can find my Instagram too there. Well, yeah, valid point. So if people go to your Instagram account, there's a link in your bio where they can find out more information. Yeah, now, yeah, that's the, that, that's probably yeah. the best way because we are talking about Instagram. So yeah. People yeah. go to his Instagram account and uh, click the buy on. I'll leave a link below <laughs> in the YouTube <laughs> video. And, and I'll actually leave a link in the podcast as well. So uh, we'll do that because this is going to be a podcast as well. So I want to thank you. It's always interesting to talk to you. It's always get, you great so little much. trips, tips. And I always get my mind thinking. So um, yeah, we will let you go. Thank you very much. And we'll talk to you uh, probably in an hour in another meeting. Yeah, it's true. Thank you so much, Bob. Thanks for everyone who's listening. You guys are awesome for listening to Bob. And Bob, keep up your work. Yeah, give it a try.